Good evening. My name is Carol Cottrell, and I'm the Executive Director for Lawbach Literacy, New Brunswick. And I want to thank you for joining our Greek excursion. I thought tonight I would tell you about the Greek islands. Well, maybe not all of them, because there are more than 6,000 islands in Greece, 200 of which are inhabited. But before I start, I want to tell you a little bit about Lawbach Literacy, New Brunswick. We are an adult literacy nonprofit. We have affiliated councils in St. George, St. John, Fredericton, North Carlton, Moncton, Miramichi, and Bathurst. We help adults ages 16 to 106 improve their literacy and essential skills. We particularly focus on helping people improve their reading, writing, and math skills. We work one-on-one -on -one with each learner to identify their goal and help them reach it. And it doesn't matter how big or how small that goal may be, whether they want to improve their skills to go back to school or be able to read to a grandchild, we can help with that. If we don't have a council in their area, we can also help through a new digital learning program that runs on either a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer. If you or someone you know is struggling with literacy, we're always here and ready to help. So please pass our information on to them. On to tonight's program. The Greece Excursion is the third in a series of virtual excursions we are offering in conjunction with our Tour of the Mediterranean virtual gala event, which will be held on November 19th. Tickets for that event are still available until Thursday, November 12th. Your meal kit includes everything you need for a five course meal featuring tastes from Spain, Greece, France, Morocco, and Italy. You can pick it up or in the Moncton area, we're able to drop it off. That Thursday evening, we will Zoom together as we prepare and eat our meal together. You don't have to turn on your video if you don't want to. You can participate in our little trivia games and listen to our guest speakers even without showing your face. Also, if Thursday isn't a good night for you, you can save your meal kit and prepare it on either Friday or Saturday night while watching the recorded event. Because we know some people may join us at those alternate dates, we are keeping our silent auction, which is online this year, open until 11.59 p.m. on Saturday night. As for these excursions, we're trying to give you a little taste of each of those countries. If you've missed an excursion, you can still see it. Check out llnb.ca slash excursions to get the video link and see which excursions are still coming up. Now let's sit back and enjoy our excursion to the Greek Isles. And I'll beg your indulgence as I bumble along and likely mispronounce a number of the island names. First timers often describe their trip to the Greek islands as if they're one monolithic entity, sort of like going to the mall and popping in and out of different stores. It's only after visitors get to the country that they realize how impossible that is. Remember, I said there's over 6,000 islands. Of the islands with residents, each has its own character. From whitewashed cave homes of the Cyclades to the lush green Italian at Ionians to the Dodecanesis capped with crusader castles. For the most part, the islands are divided into six main island groups, plus one significant standalone, Crete. It's easier to travel between the islands of one group than it is to hop between the groups. Our first group that we're going to stop at is the Cyclades. This is the most common first stop for North American travelers and contains two of the most visited islands, Mykonos and Santorini. It is in fact a group of 24 inhabited islands, 220 isles in all, and it looks like most of the postcards you've seen. White churches with blue domes and pink bougainvillea vines twining along them, but each has its own vibe. Mykonos is known for its nightlife and its sea to be seen beaches, but it also has a gorgeous cycladic village in its center with windmills and winding lanes which were once used to confuse pirates. When on the island, you may want to visit the Municipal Library, housing over 8,000 volumes and a vast collection of 18th and 19th century photographs, documents, coins, and old seals. Santorini is a romantic and luxurious location. It is beloved by honeymooners who sit in their private pools at the top of the cliff, overlooking the caldera and watching the sun set into the ocean. Wine tasting is a must on Santorini. Local wine is wildly affordable. Another island, Peros, is home to Neosa, 
built around two bays, it has a lovely interior villages. The satellite island to Peros is Antiperos, and it's reputably, reputably where the jet set go to kick back and relax. The constant strong winds between Naxos and Peros make it a favored windsurfing location. Tinos is a site of a famous church to the Virgin Mary that is a top spot for Orthodox pilgrims. A yearly pilgrimage takes place on August 15th. It's also famous for its 80 or so windmills, about 1,000 artistic dovecotes, 50 active villages, and Venetian fortifications. And that's just a sampling of what the islands of the Cyclades can offer. There are large islands like Naxos and Syros, the archipelago's, archipelago's capital, and tiny ones like Sykinos. From here, let's move on to the big island of Crete. The largest Greek island and southernmost, roughly halfway between Europe and Africa, Crete could be a country onto itself with its own customs, climate, accent, and cuisine. There are resort areas along the coast, but there's a lot to see off the beaten track as well. Here you'll find incredible beaches, Venetian towns like Chania, top-notch ruins such as the Palace of Gnosis. There's so much to do and see in Crete, it's hard to know where to begin. Perhaps you'd like to try to hike the stunning Samaria Gorge, the second longest in Europe. It's recommended that you wear a swimsuit underneath your clothes as there are many lovely places to stop for a swim along your way. If you like history, you could visit the ruins of the Palace of Gnosis, home of the Minoan Empire and the dreaded mythical Minotaur monster. Or perhaps you might prefer the pink sand beaches of Elephanisi. There are many hotels and resorts on the island, but there's also a number of agritourist resorts that invite guests to immerse themselves in village life, whether it's making local moonshine at Areno or visiting a shepherd in his matata, a traditional round stone hideout like seen here at Anagran. Now we'll move to the Saronic Gulf Islands. The closest island group to Athens is also home to some of the prettiest islands. But while Hydra, Spetses, Poros, and Aegina are popular with Greek weekenders and European visitors, they're less known by North Americans. With the exception of Hydra, which was made famous by Leonard Cohen, who lived here for many years, and it is now popular with an international art crowd. The Nantucket of Greece, car-free Hydra, is tiny but mighty. It's full of grey stone captain's homes, chic boutiques, and delicious tavernas but without the amazing beaches of some of the other Greek islands. The rocky shores and crystalline water are reached by boat trips from the harbor. Spetses has green pine trees, horse and carriages trotting along the waterfronts, and yachts parked in the harbor. It is a place where super yachts bob up and down next to traditional wood fishing boats. Family friendly Poras with a large, cute town dominated by a clock tower and tree-shaded beaches, is popular with sailing aficionados. You may wish to stop by the Archaeological Museum of Poros, which houses findings from the Sanctuary of Poseidon and other nearby archaeological sites. Aegina is the closest island to Athens and has a large port town and four sandy beaches. It is home to the impressive Temple of Athea, dedicated to its namesake a goddess who is later associated with Athena. Moving on to the Ionian Islands. Lush and green, the Ionian Islands, known as the Seven Islands, or Heptanes, as a distinct historic region, they date to the centuries long Venetian rule, which preserved them from becoming part of the Ottoman Empire and created a distinct cultural identity with many Italian influences. The mix of influences led to the development of unique local culture, music, art, cuisine, and architecture, which is most visible in the old town of Corfu, with its Italianate buildings, smattering of palaces, narrow alleyways hung with laundry, and grand squares built around imposing Orthodox and Catholic churches. Kefalonia, the largest island of the Ionian Islands, has two main cultural attractions the fishing villages of Fiscardo and Axis, as well as the natural attractions like Melisani, the underground lake shown here. 
the Dragarati Cave and the Mirto Beach, which have helped popularize the island. The film, Captain Corelli's Mandolin, was also shot here. Lefkada, connected to the mainland by a bridge, has woodland, woodland villages in the middle and some of Greeks' best beaches along its shores, like the white sand beaches of Porto Katsiki. On the larger islands, you'll want to avoid the packaged, tourist-filled all-inclusives that cater to British tourists in some of the coastal towns. And you'll want to try to avoid August when all of Italy and much of France crowds the beaches. The islands of the Sporades. There are 24 of these green islands off the northeastern coast of Greece, but only four are inhabited. If you've seen Mamma Mia, you know what they look like. Dark green pine trees, white churches, and lots of sands and rock. Skathos is famous for its gold sands and its and charming nightlife. While the low-key Scopolis, the Mamma Mia Island, is a natural paradise of white pebble coves, oak forests, monasteries, traditional villages, and lots of shipwrecks off the coast of the National Marine Park. Skiros's claim to fame, on the other hand, are its ceramics, handicrafts, churches, and gorgeous Hora, the mountaintop capital crowned by a Venetian castle. Skiros is home to Skiros Tours, an alternative tourism company that organizes yoga, writing, and art retreats. The Northeast Aegean Islands. This collection of 13 islands with notable biggies, Ikaria, Samios, Lemnios, Lesios, and Chios are the area of Greece that is closest to the peninsula of Asia Minor, which is now Turkey, but used to be part of the Byzantine Empire. Here you'll find things you won't find anywhere else, like the petrified forest on Lesbios, which was formed 20 million years ago when a volcano erupted and covered the northern part of the island with ash and lava. Volcanic rocks and sand dunes on Lemnos, remnants of the Miocene volcanoes that used to spew lava onto the shores. The petrified lava is frozen in all sorts of bizarre shapes, from ripples in the rock face to built up 3D spirals and spheres. Thermal springs on Icaria, which have been known and used since antiquity for their therapeutic and healing benefits. People came from all over Greece and Asia Minor to improve their health in their ancient spa town of Therma, where you can still find ruins of the ancient spa facilities. And the nearly perfectly preserved medieval fortress villages like Mesta on the island of Chios, which was built in the 12th century during the Byzantine era. and amazing food and wine. The local cuisine may be one reason Ikaria is known as a blue zone, a site where locals live healthy lives to the age 100 and beyond. The islands of the Dodecanes. This archipelago gets its name from the Greek number 12, Dodeca, because it contains, you guessed it, 12 main islands and multiple smaller ones. Rhodes and Kos are the two largest islands with smaller ones largely still undiscovered. As elsewhere in Greek, Greece, these islands were shaped by eons of history. In the town of Lindos on Rhodes, for example, there's an ancient Greek Acropolis at the top of the hill, a medieval village in the middle, and a modern town on the beach at the bottom. On Kos, the Asclepion, is probably the most visited attraction. According to Greek mythology, Asclepius was the god of medicine and healing. Asclepions are ancient medical schools, clinics, and temples. In ancient Greece, there were more than 300, but none as large or as well known as the one on Kos, which dates back to 400 BC. The island of Patmos is famous for its still working monastery of St. John the Divine, and the nearby cave in which he had the vision which inspired the Book of Revelation. The best time to vacation in Greece is June or September, as the weather is ideal and there are fewer crowds than in the high season of July and August. But each island group will also have its own weather, so you'll want to check that out before visiting. Crete, for instance, is warmest all year round, so it's a great choice for a late fall visit. 
a cruise of the Greek islands is an introductory option that can give you an idea of where you'd like to visit for a lengthier stay. And that's the end of our Greek island excursion. I hope I gave you lots to think about. I am around and encourage you to include any questions you may have in the Zoom chat, and I will do my best to answer them. While you do that, I'm going to thank our sponsors. TD Bank, who is the title sponsor for our Tour of the Mediterranean. McGuinness Cooper, who the, is our Morocco level sponsor and is the host for the Morocco excursion on the 16th. The Chartered Professional Accountants of New Brunswick, who have sponsored the beverages for our virtual gala event. Horizon Health Network, who is a sponsor for the True of the Mediterranean virtual gala, as well as a host for the France excursion on November 12th. Northland Design Studio, another sponsor for our virtual gala, as well as the host of the excursion we had to Spain. And last but not least, NVCC, our culinary partner, who will be preparing the meal kits for our Tour of the Mediterranean on November 19th. I will be posting numerous links on our event page for Greece, and I encourage you to take a look at them and explore them at your leisure. And speaking of leisure, I want to thank travelandleisure.com for their excellent resources on the Greek islands, which I relied heavily upon for this presentation. Thank you.